A serious question to all viewers. Why is Farrell Winter's Helm so underrated in Destiny? It can weaken targets by 30%, can be activated via melee or finisher, can be pulled off back to back via finisher alone, has wide AoE depending on enemy type, and will stun enemies for your team. This is truly baffling to understand as it doesn't require a lot to activate it, and depending on the subclass used, it could be one of the best all round exotic to have on hand. Yet, this isn't the case as barely anyone uses it. Ask yourself, what would it take to use an exotic like this in a build? And then ask yourself, would you like to know how to make an exotic busted within a build? Once you get your answer, it will all come back to this amazing void build that will lean heavily into the survivalness of the kit, but ultimately be able to pull off those debuffs back to back is what will allow you to do those solar waves while in higher difficulty much more easier. Sounds crazy, right? Well, uh, let's make a start and I'll guide you through it. As Fair Winter is an easy exotic to use for any subclass, your exotic weapon can be of your choosing depending on what your playstyle is. Its exotic trait, Warlord's End, states A powered melee final blows creates a burst of energy that weakens nearby targets. The finishers and final blows against more powerful targets increase the radius of the burst and the length of the weakening effect. This is a 30% debuff that could do some interesting damage to enemy types over time and pretty much lock down the entire area. Considering Void Melee is terrible with getting one shot kills, it's best advised you don't lean heavily into the melee side of things but rather invest into your finisher. The finishers are easier to pull off and much safer to activate with near 100% rate. However, pulling this off in something like Legend Onslaught will be a gamble at times and I've learned this the hard way. So I chose to use Berry Bloodline as is a perfect for So I chose to use Berry Bloodline as is perfect for survival and allowing us to activate a finisher faster. Its exotic trait, Hungering Quarrel, states a double fires tracking bolts, landing bolts leeches health from targets. Basically, depending on the enemy type and who you face, you can get a free devourer that will regen your health and grenade ability per kill made. This is great as it would mean we wouldn't need to use Feed the Void aspect at all and thus we can make full use of the kit quite easily. On top of that, the sidearm is unique with his damage where it can easily inflict high damage just from one position shot alone. This with Fell Winter will allow users to weaken enemies just enough to the point of a finisher being made available for whoever you face and if that fails, then you get a free devour on hand. A win-win in everyone's book. For aspects and fragments, you're going to want to have Child Your Gods where upon creating a rift, you'll cast a Void Soul. Damaging a target with Void Soul will drain them and give you back grenade, melee, class ability and health for the user. Chaos Accelerant where overcharging your magnetic grenade releases a short range blast. Echo Obscurity where finisher final blows make you invisible. Echo Explosion where void final blows cause targets to explode. Echo of Cessation, where finisher final blow causes nearby targets to become volatile. And Echo of Persistence, where void buffs applied to you are increased. As we are relying on an all finisher setup, you want to run something similar to what Gyro Falcon Void Hunters would run. That setup now will not only allow us to trigger a debuff for your finishers, but also grant volatile AoE to anyone nearby and also make us invisible. Effectively, this will create a sneaky Invis Warlock that acts like a miniature version of Jar Falcon, but better. This is what you should only run with, as going with anything else outside of this will do you a big disservice down the line, and aspects chosen as well will do the significant slowing down of enemies that will greatly need for achieving your goal. For the modern stats, Resilience, Discipline and Strength are three core stats to focus on. Resilience at tier 10 will provide users a 30% damage reduction for all incoming attacks. Not much is required to improve this simple stat as this with Echo Obscurity and Devour will be enough security to protect you from whatever you face. Your discipline will be at tier 10 for 53 second cooldown via magnetic grenades. Combining this with Chaos Accelerant will transform your grenade from a sticky to a surprising buckshot melee with incredible strength. A playing around with this while using Fair Winters is quite honestly the recommended combo for dealing with debuff and highly grouped up enemies at all at once. For making this as consistent as possible, I would recommend the following mods. Grenade Kickstart for a 
to 45% bonus, Innovation for a 10% buff, Bomber Mod for a 12% buff, and Distribution for a 4% all ability buff. This, if played out right, should give you half to a full energy amount back depending on what gets activated. Lastly, Strength is an odd one that doesn't need much focus but will be used often. I recommend you don't invest too much in the stat as finishers will be the main focus of the build but have just enough to support it. The Child of the Old Gods and Momentum Transfer is pretty much all you'll really need from my experience. This section now focuses on armor charges and additional optional mods applied. Charge up times 1 will expand how many charges we can carry, while Stacks and Stack makes it so that each aura power collected will be 2. After that, having Connect Siphon, the powerful attraction mod, will further help creating orbs at a faster rate and collecting them as well. Lastly, having Heavy Ammo, Special Ammo Finder, Reserves, and Scavenger mod is all you'll need from there onwards for better bloodline usage. For weapons, as we have already covered which exotic weapon we are using, I've covered the following two weapons that I think is best supported for the kit overall. A smile Marine with Firefly and Puglis is something that I recommend everyone should gain and aim for. Although it's a raid weapon, having a Puglis perk alone is what the build will desire the most since we won't need to sacrifice too much to support a melee charge. A decent weapon that has good damage and range and also comes packed with an amazing weapon trait that many people tend to sleep on, but in a well coordinated team, does carry you through. Heavy with a retrofit escape aid with target lock and fourth time to charm. A perfect weapon to use against bosses and solely bosses alone, and it has that continuous damage boost being applied which will allow the weapon to do double its DPS rate by quite a distance. It's also ideal for boss waves and tormentors you'll face as the crit spots are hard to hit at times while using rockets, although the option to use rockets and such is down to you. Honestly, a favourite build of mine that I like to run past with people every now and then, just to remind them that this exotic exists. It's unfortunate to see the exotic not get the love it rightfully deserves, but I can attest to saying that when players do see someone using this in action, they tend to get all giddy inside. Now the build focuses primarily on locking areas down, either by melee or finishers. And with thanks to how powerful Fairwinters is upon killing a major enemy, it would give you and allies the breathing room needed to shut down multiple lanes while dealing with bigger threats on the hand. Although most players prefer to use Solar instead since this entire kit is more better utilised for buffing oneself, Void has the unique effect of locking areas down pretty well depending on the class pick. Void Hunters have Tether which works well for shutting down multiple enemies, while Warlocks have Void Soul which can grant a number of benefits to the user the longer it's out. This is what you'll see in the current clip being done, where I'm using both Fell Winters and Void Soul's effect of stunning enemies to great success, and then using the Carnage of Army to activate Buried Bloodline effect of healing me and giving me that extra dose of protection while I carry on. If it wasn't thanks to my teammates, not using their super correctly, of course, we could have easily flown to wave 50 on Legend then and then. So it sounds great in all apartments, except for one, and that is Fell Winter's limited usage in boss rooms or boss environments. Now don't get me wrong, you can use Fell Winter's effect in a boss room if you manage to weaken the enemy doing so. However, with the amount of enemies that spawn in the room alone, it becomes near impossible to pull this effect off on legend mode. Normal? Sure. Legend? Yeah. This is why having a steady and decent machine gun or just any decent weapon in hand does wonders with dealing with bosses as you don't need to worry about debuffing when this weapon alone packs a punch. On top of that, you then have your super, a void soul and teammates to aid you when things do get bad, although teammates will vary. So yes, you should use this build at every chance you get as it does wonders with locking areas down and a neat bundle for you and your team. If you have Terror Hunter and Solar Titan on hand when pairing this build up, you're going to get some quite magical things out of this, honestly, so give this a go. So there we have it, I hope you all enjoyed the build breakdown. If you have any thoughts on content shared then please leave a comment below while at the same time if you enjoyed the content and want more of these videos in the future then leave a like and a sub while here. I will leave the dim link for the build below and if you want more stuff like this then I will play as available covering all types of builds you desire. 
it was great sharing today's video with you all and I hope to see you again soon.